So to leverage RoboFlow's dataset health check tool and to do more quality analysis on your data set, you can take a public data set from RoboFlow Universe, or you can take your own data set that you're using for your project and begin with a public workspace or a sandbox workspace. So that sandbox workspace, uh, just know that you know that's going to be your private workspace in there and uh, just gives you the ability to kind of work on that proof of concept that you're doing. Whereas that public workspace, the nice thing about that is you have a lot more image uh, source, uh, a lot, of, lot more source image allotment to begin with. And you can also have that data set featured on RoboFlow Universe if you contact our team and we can just help you get set up with that and help you get your model trained as well to have that those initial metrics available with your data set for RoboFlow Universe. And by the way, my name is Mohammed, and I'm with the RoboFlow team. And today I'm just going to show you more of the details and visualization you get from the RoboFlow train. And also you can complete that active learning loop and really leverage the power of data set health check with all of these metrics and tools to really create a robust proof of concept and continue that to create a very robust computer vision model. Okay, so I'm using the bike helmet detection data set from RoboFlow Universe. And what I'm doing with this data set is using the data set health check tool, but also looking at the details um, for the training metrics. So one thing I want to look at very quickly is within my health check to see what my class balance is here. And one thing I'm seeing that I already have um, a class balance very skewed towards with helmet. And then going back to my data set here, I'm going to look at the fact that my precision is only 65%. So I'm looking at the details here. And I see that in terms of average precision by class, I'm finding that without helmet is 87, with helmet is 92. If I look at the same for my test set, I see that I see that um, essentially similar here. So looking at the training graphs, it's one other thing you can do. But one thing that may be causing that is the fact that, hey, maybe I am, uh, maybe that uh, bad class balance is really having an effect on the precision. So I want to add more representations of without helmet. But first, before I do that, I also want to visualize um, some of my test set predictions in here. So first and foremost, I'm going to look at this first image here. And then you can load more as well just to see how many, just to see all of them in here. So I see within the UI, 63 of 63. And then I can see the number of with helmet predictions, my model predictions and without helmet predictions as well for my model predictions. So I see already that I have a double prediction here for without helmet and with helmet here in the corner. So my model predicts without helmet correctly for the man standing on the bike uh, back there, but also predicts him as with helmet. So that class balance could be causing something there. I can see all the attributes as well. And then I can see the resize, auto orient, see how it was generated, the name of the image, and then also the raw data. In terms of the pre-processing, the prediction boxes, the augmentations, and sources. And then I can also look at ground truth here. So I can compare my ground truth to my model predictions. So look at my ground truth. I see that, oh, I only annotated, or this data set was only annotated with this man here without helmet, this woman here without helmet, but also back here, this man, he was not annotated as without helmet. Another thing I'm missing here is there's a guy back here on a bike, and while he's kind of out of view, out of focus, I'm going to want to annotate this one as well, because he is on a bike, and it appears that he isn't wearing a helmet either. So that insight that I really get there from visualizing, visualizing my ground truth for first my model predictions is already telling me that I'm missing some opportunities to improve my model. But another thing here that I do see is I should be making these bounding boxes tighter, just as tight around the subject for object detection as possible, because that will help with my model in itself, not feeding in that extra information for that detection so that I can have tighter bounding boxes for my model predictions as well. So I can go back to my data set here. So loading up on annotation, and then I can go back to my testing set to find that very same image in here. So I see that I have the without helmet annotations. So here I see the drag tool. I see the create tool as well that I can also access by clicking C or by, or by clicking on, um, on that tool in itself. 
are also marking null. Because another thing I like to do is, let's say that we wanted to make sure our model wasn't incorrectly predicting past, uh, people just walking by that don't even have bikes as people without helmets because we're just worried about people on bikes with or without helmets. So I may want to include some images with no bikes included of just people walking and then put those in as null. It's like marking that image as null. And what usually I like to have around 2% or so of my data set having null annotations within there. And that'll just really help my data set be more robust and not make incorrect predictions on people that aren't even on bikes as people that uh, should be marked as without helmet. So the other thing I can do is I can repeat a previous annotation, I can undo an annotation, and I can redo an annotation. But here I'm interested in having the drag tool on because I want to make this bounding box tighter. So I'm going to make this tighter around his head here. And then you can zoom up to 500% as you see here. So, and then I, to save, I can just hit enter. And then to delete a bounding box while I'm on it, I can also just press, back, press backspace or delete twice to get rid of it. And then I go to this woman here, and I'm going to tighten this bounding box around her head. It's without helmet. And then this individual back here, I click C, or I can just click the Create tool. To, to begin creating a new bounding box. And I want to put one around his head. And I want to have that as close as possible. I have that without helmet as well. And then this man over here, I want to have that tight bounding box around his head. And also put this as without helmet. And there we are. So to change a class as well, you can just use that drag tool by click, clicking the drag button or by just pressing D and then I can change that class here by clicking on it or I can press the number one or the number two to switch over and then here we are so I now have and I can highlight all, all of these as well so I now see that I have four representations of people without helmets in this image so you can go through with all your images doing the same making these bounding boxes just a bit tighter So this is a good quality control, quality analysis step to do whenever you're beginning to train a model because you really want to begin with the end in mind and make sure that you're making proper detections. And I like how these bounding boxes are created too in just the sense of that even though this helmet is partly occluded, uh, we do want to make sure that we capture the entire helmet within it. Because labeling occluded objects is important because you're going to have situations in video feeds or in your detections that you don't have a full representation within it, but you still want that uh, object to be properly detected. So teaching that model that, hey, you might not always see the entire thing, but over time, I want you to get good enough that you can still make a proper detection. And it's okay that part of his neck is in here. What's important is that the helmet is in here and that his head is in here. As, as, as this data set grows and as we get more and more representations, as long as we're properly annotating and having great annotations in every single image, our model is just only going to improve over time and the model predictions are going to be closer and closer to the ground truth. I'm going to make this just a little tighter around her, her head as well because the hair is not as important. What's important is the head in itself, the face, and also the helmet. So I go to this next one and I'm looking in here, pretty pretty good bounding boxes in all these. I can make this a little tighter to, her, to up to her chin here. I can make sure I get a little less of the sky in here because that's gonna be important as well just because this fact that this uh, helmet here is kind of blending in with the background. And then I want to bring this in tighter because having more, a lot of that tree in there isn't really gonna help my model. Go to this next image, same thing. Bring this down a bit closer, very important here, just because of the fact that this helmet does blend in with that background a little bit. Same with this one. So a lot of people aren't as granular and careful like this, but if you are, when you are creating that initial proof of concept or that initial piece of your model, it's only gonna make things better for you over time. Because why waste time coming back to have better annotations when you can just have great annotations from the beginning and only, and really just worry about that quality control uh, based on what you're having in terms of your class balance and also what you're seeing in that details pane for how good 
uh, what your precision metrics are for your validation in your test sets. All right, and we see another example here of where we just really want to make sure these bounding boxes are a bit tighter. Oh, ah, messed up a little bit there. Here we are, a bit closer. Here we are again, move that over a little more. And then moving this next one over here. There we are. So you see this example here, this person without the helmet. Great job having this in here by the data set creator, Saeed Salman Reza. So this data set, bike uh, helmet detection is available on universe.roboflow.com. So if you create a public workspace, you can contact our team to get help get that expedited for getting featured on Roboflow Universe. If you also want help uh, from other people with expanding the size of your data set based on the type of model that you're looking to create. So an issue with detect with detecting some of the occluded aspects here is that we just can't really properly see whether this person back here is wearing a helmet or not due to how blurry this image is. So that's something to consider as well in terms of in terms of your photo quality. Make sure you, you're annotating things that you can properly see. So there as well, and then get a little less of her body in here and just the actual helmet. And then here as well, make this a little tighter. All right. So then after doing that quality control through all of our testing, validation and training sets. So again, it's easier to do it from the beginning than it is to have to come back around, but you can still do that using our health check tool. And then you're seeing those uh, those metrics in here as well. So remember, I used visualize to see the model predictions versus ground truth. And then with health check as well, I can see again the amount of images uh, in each of the sets that are that have just with helmet tags or, or or include without helmet tags. We have 126 within the validation set, and I click in here and see that 88 of my images in my validation set for with helmet. And then I can see as well that in my validation set that I have here a total of 53 images with the without helmet tag. So a little, a little slower on my side here. So I just have a lot of things up on the computer at the moment. But um, as well, that's just showing that, yeah, you can do more of that granular quality analysis control to make sure that you are properly improving your model over time and you're not working with bad data because it's just as important to have lots and lots of data as it is to have good representative data uh, uh, in terms of having that good class balance of having of using those pre-processing steps to resize your images so that they're having the same size uh, distribution as well. And that's really going to help you create a great, robust model over time as you keep bringing in more images and as you keep bringing in more examples of doing inference out in the wild where you're having low confidence or having incorrect predictions and then bringing those images in to label them and really complete that active learning loop.